Um, hello there. Um, it's been a while. I'm. I didn't really come on here to provide entertainment for you all. I just come here to share my view, just so you know. <laughs> but um, my uh, my frustration right now is just that I'm watching all the chaos that's developing in Minnesota and the riots and everything that's going on. And um, I'm thinking about I'm thinking about uh, Dante Wright and everything. I mean, a 20 year old kid dead for you know a, a traffic stop. The, the thing that frustrates me is that we can have this back and forth all over the internet in the comments section where everybody's sniping at each other back and forth over you know. Who um who did what? Who's who's responsible? You know, and if this kid deserved it because he you know you know we got picked up for like he had an outstanding pistol charge by the way. Let him do it. We're talking about a pistol too. We're not talking about like an AR-15 or an AK-47. We're talking about a fucking pistol that was unregistered, and that was the weapons charge that he got. You know, which by the way screams protection intended for personal protection, not you know, to go out and mow out, um, you know, to participate in mass shootings like we've seen from so many members of the white community. <sighs> so, you know, this kid is now dead because he didn't show up in court and he didn't comply with the police when they tried to arrest him. <laughs> but saying that she didn't screw up, saying that what happened there was not an epic failure, I mean... The, the thing about the police is just, and what they did, and, 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 and what they, I mean, this had to be a case of not just negligence, but, and not just criminal negligence, but like an especially bad case of negligence. And it, it, it leaves me feeling like what is needed, you know, after all this is new law where cases that are especially egregious examples of, of negligence end up, you know, attracting more severe sentencing because this is not i mean like a criminally negligent homicide you know not quite as bad as what happened here what she did you know with minnesota being a tinderbox that was on the edge in a fragile situation that was on the edge of completely exploding and going over the edge you know for her to have done that, it feels sort of like the police are actually fueling unrest. Instead of de-escalating these situations, they are now escalating them. And have been. And I'm not happy about any of it. Because, you know, it, might, it may not have happened in my locale. Look around. I mean, does, does anything... Does, can you even hear any noises except, like, our appliances going off and our washer machines going? Nobody's... It's a peaceful, it's peaceful here. You know, nothing is really happening. But downtown was on fire last night, you know? And it, there are sympathy protests because somebody tried to hold a vigil. And if you know anything about Portland, I want you to withhold judgment because you don't live in the region, okay? For most of you. If you live in the Portland region, you know this for a fact. If you hold a vigil and it carries on until the sun goes down, until, until like, you know, until, like, the sun is completely down at night. Like, even if it's a vigil in sympathy for these guys, there are going to be black bloc anarchists that show up and hijack protests from the, from the peaceful protesters. I mean, and that's just, like, a fact of life that agent provocateurs, you know, participate in these riots, hoping to spark something and to encourage other people to stir up even more chaos. I mean, that, that's, that's what happens. Every time there's a there's a there's a protest downtown in, in, in the Portland region, you know, and it carries on after night. So if you if you go to a protest in the town, you usually kind of are weary about being there after hours because you know what's going to happen. You know, Portland riots on a like a regular basis, it's got a reputation for being proud a little bit rude. Then you know, that's you know to some extent we consider that a personal achievement. We're proud of it. And to another, you know, it's just you know <laughs> I, I kind of like the fact that I'm living in a little anarchist, a uh, uh, little place that, you know, where people, you know, get angry at things like this. But, you know, on the flip end of things, you know, uh, 
I don't want to be blamed for what they do because I know what can happen. And Portland's been, you know, Portland's been on fire, you know, for so long it was on fire last summer. It's, it's on, it's on fire yet again, you know, and I, my heart goes out to all the businesses that have been affected in, in all this and all the people that have been caught up in, you know, the trouble and, and that school downtown that is getting tired of being tear gassed. You know, the kids can't play in the playground because of all the tear gas that the cops have deployed to quell these protests. I mean, I mean, I mean, like we're 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 dealing with a lot as it is, and and now we, and and now and now this, you know, and and Minnesota has only like really fueled further chaos and further rioting. You know, the police fucked up, like they mismanaged the situation so badly in such an epic way that you know it's upsetting i'm mad at the police and yes i know my skin color but i mean how do you how do you fuck things up this badly 